Hello, this is Lolly, and I want to share this Memory Dex card, Rolodex card that I made. It's an oven, and I'm going to show you a tutorial on how I made it. And you can see the oven door opens, and it's magnetized. You can hear that clasp right there. Okay, let's get started. So um, this is a file that I created. Um, I did it in the Silhouette Design Studio software, but I have it available as um, an SVG file as well. And I will have it available as a PNG, which is just a photo, but you need to understand that if you just take that image and just print it off, you might not be able to get it exactly right measurements to fit in the Rolodex um, system. So you will need to use the software. You need to use either, um, you need to use like the Cameo software, which is free, and I will give you a link down below with the explanations on um, how you can use these images and use them even though you don't have a cameo because you can hand cut these images out. So on the file it comes with the back of the oven, the front of the oven, and then I have two more bottom pieces to go under this so it kind of gives the door a little lift. And then this is the piece that comes out of the door for the window and I, you will need that. I have four identical pieces for the um, the oven drawer handle here, and that's because I wanted that to give it a little extra firmness across there. I have all the black pieces here for your knobs. This is for the back of it. If you want um, an oven window, you'll need some acetate, and this is one and a half by two and three quarters. And if you want it magnetized, you will need magnets. If you don't, you can just glue it on place here. And also, I used an image, uh, a rubber stamped image of a teapot, but I really decided that I would like to have a pie. So this file will be included with the oven, and you can put that in the oven, like in here, or you can put it on the stove top, whichever is your preference. Okay, so if you want to see how it's made, stay tuned and let's get started. The first thing I want to use is some Scotch uh, Quick Dry or Scotch Tacky Glue as they call it now. And I'm just gluing all of these together because, like I said, I want to give this extra firmness. Okay, so here is the back of the oven. I want to work on the oven door. Now my pattern has a little score line right here, and you could see that. Um, and I have it set up that on, if you use the studio file, this score line is in blue and all the rest of the pattern is in red, so that if you want, you can change the settings on the blue line to just lightly scratch the paper instead of cutting all the way through. Okay, so what I want to do too on these is put both of these on the bottom here. Like I said, that gives, that gives a nice firmness in the bottom, but it also gives me some lift so that when I have the magnet here, I have some little space. Okay, and we're going to need this too, and what I want you to do with this one is to cut it into, well, let me get this out. I like to cut off this little rounded end here, and then cut off just under half an inch on it, like basically about three-eighths of an inch. Two strips of that is what you're going to need. And those are to protect the magnets. So if you're not going to use the magnets, you're not going to need it. Now on the oven door, on the back side, or the inside area, we want to mark where the middle is. So let me get a ruler here. So this is four inches wide. So at two inches, I want to mark the center so I know where to put my magnet. So the magnets, which are lying around here, these ones I got from K&J Magnetics. They do have it on eBay too. But what you're searching for, if I can bring this up there, this is what you need, 3 eighths inch, okay, that's the diameter, 1 32nd of an inch deep. That's how thick it is, and you're looking for N52. You must have N52 to get the strong ones, but they're so strong that they're hard to even separate. Now, I've got three. I only want two. Put those there. They'll stick to all of your craft tools, so be careful. And the first thing I do, I've got two magnets here. The first thing I do is I mark with a Sharpie on both outside edges so I know that's where the glue is going to go. My fingers will rub it off a little bit, but it'll still be enough for me to see what's going on. And need some E6000 uh, because you really need strong craft glue for this. And I'm gonna get me a piece of scrap paper as well. 
and my E6000. So I've got the magnets here. What I'm going to do is put a magnet right on that line and then this, okay? And I'm gonna put a dot here. And then this is why I have the marks on the magnet. Now I know that that's the glue side, it's going to go down. I'm gonna put that right in the middle of that line. Okay, and another dab right on top of it. And then for the rest of this paper, I'm going to use a scotch dry on both sides, but you can, or tacky glue, you can, if you wish, use E6000 for the whole thing. And I would leave this for about 20 minutes before even playing with it. Um, oops. I just realized something I should have done, and I should have put my window plastic on there first, my acrylic, my acetate. So I'm going to lift this off, since it's not too stuck yet, and go around. I'm going to use glossy accents to get this down, hopefully. You can use E6000 around here, too, or your, your glue of choice for getting acrylic, um, acetate glued down. Hope I left myself enough room. There, perfect. Okay, now we need to work on this cardstock again because I just took it up and I may have lost some glue there. So because I messed with that and now I'm gluing on to acetate as well, I wanna make sure that I'm actually covering this really well. So I'm putting E6000 where the paper is going to go as well. Okay, I'm glad I caught that. Alrighty, I'm gonna hold this for a couple minutes. So um, at this point too, now if you're really, really impatient, you're gonna have to be patient anyway. <laughs> because the magnets are really going to irritate you if you don't do this right. Um, so give us a good 20 minutes, like I said. In the meantime, let's come over here. And I want to draw a line lightly. Oops, see how these magnets are sticking to my ruler? I want to draw a light line about three eighths of an inch from the top of this oven, and that's just to, so I can see where to stick my uh, all my knobs. And along that, I'm going to put a mark at two inches, so I have a little cross, and you can't see it. I was drawing so lightly, but now because I drew so lightly, even you can't see it. Okay, so put that there. And another thing you could do, um, a friend suggested that I put silver around the knobs to make it look like metal, but I didn't have a silver pen. I have the gold. I have the, um, the deco color in gold at a fine point. And so I did that around there to make little metal drawers around, uh, knobs around that. So there's that. And I'm just going to lay my ruler here and kind of do dabs half inch intervals away from the main knob. I can see I wasn't very straight on some of my gluing, but that's going to be covered up with the door. Okay, next thing is this. You're gonna to want to center that on the back and how deeply you put that in there is up to you. Let's see if I just draw, where's my pencil? If I draw a half inch line and a half inch line there, that just helps me to make sure I get this straight. <laughs> That's one problem with Scotch Tacky Glue. It really dries so quickly that um, you may have, if you're not gluing straight, you may have a hard time getting the um, item straightened before it gets all uh, dried on you and then center it in the middle of the oven like that. So here's what I was saying the pie can be sitting on top of the stove top like that or it can go in the oven it's totally up to you but I just love that little pie that I made so the other magnet is going to be going here with the glue side down okay I'm going to wait until this dries and then we'll mess with that. In the meantime, it's still drying. It's enough for me to flip it over and glue this in place, okay? So let's do that. Again, this is the scotch. And I have a fine tip nozzle on it. I love the fine tip. 
and I'm just eyeballing this. I know I could do better. And there are so many cute things you can do with this. You could like use a little fabric and drape a towel over this. That would be really a little hand towel. Okay. Now, another thing that you'll notice I did on this one was I just took another uh, strip of four inch wide, I think it's one and a half inch deep cardstock to put in here to give a little bit of contrast to the back of the oven. And you're obviously you can do that because if you don't, you're just going to see the back of the oven is the same same color as this. So whatever color you want the back of your oven to be. Okay, I'm going to come back when this is dry. Okay, I'm back and I let it dry enough that I can play around with it now. So the next thing I want to do is bend this a little bit so I know where to add my glue. I'm going to attach the door to the bottom part. Okay. Make sure the door lines up. There we go. I'm going to push on that. Get that a nice seal. So in lining magnets up, this is just kind of my preferred method. <laughs> okay, remember I still have the mark here to know which side gets the glue because otherwise I could glue it on here the wrong way and it won't stick. So now I'm going to open this up. This is where I have the one. I'm going to put the paper on there for the next magnet. And where'd my trusty glue go again? That E6000 keeps wanting to take off. I'm going to put this across here and the glue side is actually going to go up. And there's a reason for that because it's the way it's going to glue in there. Okay, a little bit of that. Now I'm going to lay that on top of this one here. Now see it's already attached. All I have to do is smash it on there good and hard. Hold that for a minute or two or three. Now I don't want the oven door to get glued shut. So what I want to do is carefully pry my finger in between the two layers of cardstock there and pull it open. But don't move the magnet. The magnet is exactly where it needs to be because I use this magnet to place it. See, now that needs to rest. But in the meantime, if I want to, I could glue this in. I just cut another piece of paper. It's just shy of one and a half inches wide, so it's probably about one and three eighths. And it is just shy of four inches, so it doesn't hang over the end. It's just some contrasting paper. I think it makes the oven look better to have a different color in there. Okay, now while that's drying, I like to make sure that the oven door is open. And the reason is, um, if I let it shut while it's drying, the two, air, the two pieces of cardstock could E6000 themselves together. I don't want that to happen. So I usually take something that is not metallic, <laughs> like a plastic bottle or something, or a Sharpie marker, and I'll put that in between them so they don't do that. They don't stick together. So that's it in a nutshell. I could draw a line across there for a shelf, or just sit this in there, or like I did here, put a phrase in there. Totally up to you, but that's it and how it works. I have that. You could put that up there all up to you. So I love it. I think it was a really fun project. I'm going to just sign off now and let this one completely dry before I close it by putting my Sharpie in there. So underneath I will have videos, uh, um, excuse me, I'll have links to the the files for this and also the, the uh, series on how to use images when you don't own a Cameo machine because you can use the images and you can size them perfectly that way instead of just printing off a photo and it's the wrong size. And I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a pleasure. Thank you.